What is up guys? I'm back yet again with another one. Today, I'm sharing a short snippet video of a market analysis session with my students. Sit back, relax, and enjoy. As mentioned, this is just a short notice Zoom session. Uh, I just had free time and I just decided to speak to you guys on a few things. We're just going to analyze a couple of charts and then we're going to assess um, key areas where we look to take our trades and so forth, okay? So quickly, let me just pick maybe volatility 75. Uh, I'm going to remove everything and then we start from scratch, okay? So starting from scratch always means starting from the higher time frames, i.e. the monthly. That is the highest time frame, uh, unless you're using trading view, which I think has a lower one or whatever. But um, the most important thing as usual, as I always say, is you want to start from the higher time frames. Reason being, you want to get a feel of what the market is trying to do. So now on the monthly time frame, what we have is that the market has been going down for a long period of time, just like that. And all of a sudden, in fact, let's just discuss the market structure, right? So we have that impulsive move, and then we have the correction, impulsive move, we had the correction. Now we have that impulsive phase, and then, you know, we can somewhat um, assume that we're in a corrective phase right now, okay? So now before we go to the lower time frames, we could then want to ask each other, where are we trying to correct to? Okay, uh, there's a message here. I can't see your screen. If you can't see my screen, please let me know. But if you can, just type, we can see, so that I don't want to continue and talk to myself. Um, just say we can see. Just message, we can see, if you can see. And then we at least know that it's just that one person or a few people. All right, cool. You guys can see. I see. Beautiful. Okay. Anyway, so we're going to continue now. So... We had that impulsive move, and it seems as if the market is trying to correct right now. In my opinion, when I just look at momentum, we had that big push up. But now what this market is trying to do, i.e. go down, I don't think has enough power for it to continue down like that. It's all speculation. I'm not claiming to know it all. Um, in fact, where I would want the market to retrace to, in my opinion, is if I can put maybe a horizontal line to maybe somewhere around here. And then I can put another horizontal line to even here. Now... Why, am, why would I want the market to retrace to that level? Now, let's go to the line graph a little bit. You can clearly see if we were to go to the line graph and we zone this area, we can see what has happened in that area. First of all, you can see that we went there and we failed to break, okay? We finally broke. Then now we came here, we failed to break, right? Tried to go up now, we failed. Uh, we finally broke. Now, you know, clearly speaking, if we were to retrace into the then this should be a good level for us to take that sell position. So you see what that higher time frame analysis can do for you, coupled with patience and then having to wait for a long period of time for these things to happen. So what we're saying is essentially we want to sell. Even look at lines of sensitivity, guys. Look at this. Look at this, right? Look at this. Look at this. This is a very powerful zone. That It would take a lot for you to be able to convince me that the market won't sell when we get in there. You understand? It's all about probabilities in the end of the day, right? So now let's go to the weekly time frame and assess what's going on. Now on the weekly, we had that move, right? Move down nice and strong. So remember we said that this is that retracement, right? So now remember a, a retracement in its nature is not a strong movement. It's never going to be this impulsive. The reason being is that the market is actually going down. We saw this from the monthly time frame that the market is heavily selling. So what that means is that the impulsive moves will be the down movements and then the corrective moves would be those weak, annoying movements. The impulsive move, and then the corrective move, the weak, annoying movement. Impulsive move. Now, we can expect that weak, annoying movement to that level there. So now, this is what a qualified, a quality trader then starts thinking in their mind. If you want to trade the weak, impulse, uh, the weak movement, you need to also just risk less. Because it's not the best... Um, it's not the best movement to trade. It's actually somewhat uh, frustrating because for it to go there and stuff like that, it's going to take forever. And you'll find you'll be in profit and then it goes, retraces profit, goes, retraces profit, goes. You just want an impulsive movement. But if you're impatient for the market to get here, we can actually look for buy movements. And this is what explains why we have a buy setup now on the volatility 75. So now we have a buy and a sell perspective. The sell perspective is that when price gets in here, we're going to sell. But the buy perspective would be obviously if we are to tap into here, right? We can look for buy positions that will end us up there. 
you understand what I'm saying? Proper risk management as usual is important. Now let's go to the daily time frame and assess what's actually there. So now on the daily time frame, this is what we got. We got the market was clearly coming down in the format of a downtrend here, right? Lower highs, lower lows, blah, 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 blah. Market structure was broken here. Now, obviously, we are about to form higher highs and higher lows in that corrective movement until we get to there. So now, the market structure was broken over here, right? And this is the most recent low. So now, I've always told you guys, you have to be very careful when it comes to understanding market structure. You always want to know what we call um, minor and major market structure. So major market structure is that we have a high over here and we have a higher high and we want to buy over here, right? That is the major market structure. But now look at where you guys keep getting confused. Where you guys keep getting confused is that we have a high for sure and we have a higher high here, but the market maker will then create a false higher high over here so that you think that this is a high and a higher high and then what do you do? You place your key point of interest then you pump buy positions at a price that's too high. And then the market always finds itself where? At the nice and organic raw major market structure. This is a major issue. And in my opinion, this is what is likely to happen over here. This right here, this key point of interest will be the minor, the major market structure we should all be waiting for. But I would not be surprised if someone else is seeing a high over here and then a higher high and they're trying to trade this buy over there. It's a typical amateur move coupled with impatience that you can definitely start trading like that. Because even if you go to the line graph, you'll be fooled. But now you need to also, you know, I don't want to say experience plays a part. Practice. Just practice these things so that you see. So what are we saying? If the market comes back into this level here, we should look for buy positions. Well, um, well, incorporating proper risk management and everything. And then what we, we it's also always important for us to assess confluence trading, right? Here we have a clear left shoulder. Here we have a head. And then we can expect that right shoulder somewhere around here. And we all know a head and shoulder pattern is a key reversal pattern in any market, whether we're trading cryptos and Forex. Funny enough, I've actually recently started Forex and uh, trading Forex in my spare time, and I'm doing extremely well. You know, I'm even considering actually going back to trading that and, and including my synthetics and stuff, because at the end of the day, it's all the same. All markets move via supply and demand. The only thing that sucks about actual Forex is now we have to incorporate trade times like sessions and stuff like that, and we can't trade on weekends. Okay. But anyways, so this is the movement we're expecting. You understand? And then there, and then there. Um, if we were to look at the the key point of interest from the weekly, this one where we want to sell, it will be somewhat something like this. So now this is where I would then send you that, right? As a setup, but I can't send it to you on the weekly because some of you are easily confused. You might really not understand what is this guy trying to do? So this is why we then try go to the daily and so forth, right? And on the daily, if I'm to just zoom out, all right? This is what we have, okay? would really want the market to come in here, but I'm going to push it and I would actually want the market to come right here and I'll start selling. I'll start selling when the market gets in here, I will start selling the market. And I always leave room for patience, right? So the market might initially sell and then do that to you and do these funny things and then finally drop. I don't care. At the end of the day, I know how to zone my areas and just exercise patience and just wait. And if I'm wrong, for sure, my stop loss is going to be hit. And that's all right, because I, I don't risk my whole account, right? I risk what I'm willing to lose. So if I have a $1,000 account, I'm risking $100 in that trade or $200 in that trade or whatever. And if uh, you have a $100 account, I advise you maybe risk $30 in that trade or $20 in that trade. Just, you know, the whole finances around trading is very subjective. We all have different account sizes. So it's important for you to take note um what account size you have and then you follow suit just going like that okay cool now let's just look at maybe volatility 25 this one is very annoying it's not been doing anything for us but let's look at it from a top-down perspective and see how we can take advantage of some things okay so all right let's do that let's start again from the monthly 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 why we want to get that playground so that we know where we should be waiting 
Quickly, if I'm to go on the line graph on the monthly, maybe I'll just be naughty and place a horizontal line here, because it's a clear line of sensitivity. I mean, like, even if you can't see, let's zoom in, right? You can clearly see that level broke right there. And, you know, a retracement into there, which will obviously take forever, right? Would obviously warrant us to take a sell, even in terms of market structure. This is a high, this is a lower high, this is a lower high, and, you know, we can expect a lower high somewhere around here. So, yes, before we have even scaled down, we already have our traffic lights. It's traffic lights for us to say, no matter what happens, when price gets to that traffic light, even on the H1, if I see a crazy buy signal, I'll never buy because the higher time frame is the king. It takes priority in your trading. You don't have to follow uh, what the lower time frames is always trying to tell you, right? Because those are very minor movements. They're too small for you to bank on them, okay? So now on the weekly time frame, this is what we have. It's very important for us to also just purify things. By purify things, the lower we go in terms of time frames, the more we get a feel of where we really want to be participating. And once again, this is a severely selling market. As I've always told you, synthetic indices are always selling. Um, now, the question becomes, where would you want to sell, right? And this is the most recent high over here, okay, on this weekly time frame. This is the most recent high that released price like that for all these two weeks are we together and at that high for there was an impu uh, an impulsive movement out like that do you understand what i'm saying so now what in my opinion the market is probably trying to do is to trap people to try and sell right now which is i wouldn't do that because the person who sold here and i have a student who did and and, and i think his name is javon actually javon if you're still in this trade please just send me quickly on whatsapp right now your results and then I will switch over to WhatsApp to just um, show the group how you're doing. You're probably holding this for a long time now. But anyways, uh, yes. So what am I saying? This is the most recent high. Yes, Javon, you can WhatsApp me now if you have the trade. If you don't, if you're out of it, you can just WhatsApp me saying no. Then I know that you're out of it. But anyways, so uh, this is the most recent high over here. Okay, cool. And price dropped like that right and now what i would want to do is obviously want for price to come back in here and it actually did initially right and it dropped like that but truth be told i am not satisfied that this is the actual drop from there in fact i would want price to just come back and nicely give me that entry into that zone now confluence trading once again right if price is to really get into that zone check this out we also have this support. Let's go to the line graph. We also have this nice line of sensitivity. I'll draw another line here. You see, this level here can get us really paid for, I think, I don't know how long, right? So that's really what I would want. I can't participate right now. I can't sell right now because now, imagine if you're dumb and you trade candlestick patterns and you say to yourself, oh, it left a week. And so this is a sell signal. You will really get it, right? Because the market will just do this and then do that and come down. Because I've told you, you only sell in an area where you know there's high supply and you only buy in an area where you know there's high uh, demand. In this, in this middle here, you don't trade anything because you suffer the consequences if you trade there. Are we together? So in my opinion, we can just really be patient, okay? And we really want price to come back in there. Let's go to the daily time frame and... Yes. So if it does come back in there, we're really wanting maybe a double top formation. So I would probably have a zone like this. Okay. You see that? And this becomes my key point of interest. It requires patience once again, really. And if price does come back in there, I'll then trade away. In terms of a, a buy movement, I have nothing right now. I wouldn't want to buy there as well. I just would rather wait for that. That's why I'm saying that this market is annoying to actually participate in. Because there's not much, guys. You know, volatility 25 has been annoying to trade this whole time. But for those of you who caught it there, you're definitely probably getting paid, right? And uh, let's check. Uh, Javon just WhatsApp me. Let's just check if he has it. There he is. Cool. So these are the trades he's currently holding. He has a $264 account. That account is now on 2644 And volatility 25 is a major culprit. As you can see, he has punished that thing. 478, He's just holding. He's just holding. You enter in a zone where you're meant to and you forget. You can even delete the app. Delete MetaTrader 5 and go about. This thing of you trying to trade every day is the reason why you keep getting your stop loss hit. 
because you, you haven't understood the game. The game is really about patience and playing in high levels of demand or high levels of supply on the higher time frames. Then you're done. You're done. Imagine this is uh, this I wouldn't say has taken him that long. 300, this is crazy return. This is basically still on this volatility 751S trade that I called out in the, I think, four days ago. He's still in. And it's just going down. It's just tanking because he understands where to take what? His trades from. Okay. So well done, Javon. And thank you so much for responding, my bro. I really appreciate that. And I, I, I love the fact that whenever there's a free Zoom session, you're already my student, but you're still there to show the dedication and your results will still speak volumes. Okay. So keep pushing, bro. Now let's look at volatility 10. Um, I'm actually also in this trade, you know, um, let's check this out. Yeah, now look, this is on the weekly time frame. We got in there and the entries were placed and we're going down right now. And truth be told, I would want to hold this. Oof, yeah, it's paying, it's paying, it's paying. I would really want to hold this uh, up, up until like somewhere here where you can see. I've placed a couple of entries there and I would want to hold it there. But I don't have to, right? Let's say if a price gets here, this is the daily chart. I could start even like considering, all right, do I want to take profits? And then I'll look for a re-entry and so forth. Remember, when it comes to these things, it's about your financial situation. What are you trying to do? Maybe I could make a withdrawal because I want to go out this weekend. Maybe I could make a withdrawal because I want to buy a phone this weekend or a PlayStation game or whatever. The choice is yours, but at least get the market direction right. So that you know you can even leave runners and so forth. Um, let's maybe analyze it um, straight. Cool. Let's analyze it and uh, let's analyze it from the monthly time frame. Just going to delete all these markers except the actual positions. Can't jump out of that. So now on volatility ten, what we have on the monthly time frame was a clear downtrend, right? Uh, the market is just going down. That's what we have, and um, obviously a downward market structure is a high over here. And then we have lower highs, lower highs, lower highs, and so forth. So this is the most recent high here. But now understand one thing. This high was not broken. Don't be fooled by those wicks, right? This does not constitute a break. In fact, what actually constitutes an, a, a break of a level is it has to be significant, man. Or else all of these things are what we call stop hunts. And if we go to the line graph quickly, you can clearly see that there hasn't been a break here. In fact, what has happened here is, let's nicely zoom in. This is why you have to be a principal trader. We have a high here, we have a lower high here, and price has come and done a lower high here. And that's why I would want to sell there. But now, if you go to the lower time frames and you're not seasoned and you don't know what you're doing, you panic and think it's not going to work out. But anyways, now on the weekly time frame, what do we have? Let's go to the line graph once again. We're just going to zoom out. Uh, let's do this. Cool. All right, so this is the market structure here. You see, high, lower high, lower high has been hit here. And guess what? The lows are also going lower, right? We have a low, lower low, and I would want it to even come and form a lower low all the way somewhere here, but that would take forever. You know, I'm not trying to hold trades for that long because when it comes to trading, what you're going to start realizing is that there's something what, that is called swaps, and that's the cost of holding trades, like profits for a long time you start seeing that the more you are consistent, you start really trying to avoid those unnecessary costs and stuff, especially if you hold trades for long. In fact, I'm not even going to say, especially if you hold trades for long. There's a saying in trading that it goes swing or die. And that just means, truth be told, if you claim to be a person who's in trades for five minutes and 15 minutes and you're consistent, consistent please show me your results because it's not really made like that, the game. You understand it's really more about holding trades and being patient and not many people understand that you understand but anyway so now on the daily time frame this is what we have we have this beautiful zone here that was hit okay and for i i sent this setup it was like this okay and what happened was when price got in there you know people obviously entered and you know i always tell you this if you're part of the trade alerts and setups for as long as the zone has not been breached if i give you a zone like this right and I say, we are selling in this zone, i.e. it looks like this. When price gets in there, don't, get, don't assume that the zone has been invalidated until we breach it, until candles close out of this zone. For as long as we're still in that zone, we're fighting for entries. And that fight can last some days. As you can see, three days of fighting and now the drop has come. So I have students that are in this trade, right? And you ask yourself, what is it that they know that others might not know? 
is patience. Because on the H1, let's go to the H1 time frame. you will see that this was what ha was happening here. And so, so many people will be struggling, to, they'll be really suffering, I guess, thinking, oh, you know what, this trade is gone, but we're still in the zone. That zone, there's a lot that happens, there's liquidations. And if you're my students, these are second leg entries. You see those impulsive movements and we entered the second legs. You know, if you've done my mentorship, there's no ways you don't know those type of things, but it's all still requires patience in the game. You understand? So we are definitely expecting a downward movement, you know, of course, with retracements and stuff. And if I see that um, I've made a substantial uh, amount, I will get out. You know, that's that's what the game is about. I will move my stops to entry soon and so forth, just in case of swings. But it shouldn't. It shouldn't swing. This market should actually drop. OK. And uh, students that are in it, I think it's Esther. If you're part of this Zoom session, please send your results. Um, also, Eric from Zim, please send your results. Let's check out Esther quickly. Let's check out. I, I know she had sent me something, um, you know, before this. If you're still in it, just 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 um, give us the what's this called the update, please, Esther. I don't know if my WhatsApp is going to load your chat. The reason why I'm showing this is I want to really, really, really motivate people out there to see what's happening, you know. Um, you can see this is she had a three hundred forty six dollar account. She's in this trade, very same trade. It's already on seven twenty six. You understand? Imagine you wake up maybe midday tomorrow. It's now on one point two. Withdraw. Go buy yourself something, nice clothes or whatever, so that you feel that trading works. Nothing can stop you. You come back and you do the exact same thing. That's it. That's it. That's that. That's what we're here for. Do you understand what I'm saying? We're just going to uh, we're just going to look at one more chart and then.